Good Sunday morning. This is Bishop Key Clark and welcome to Word Online. Listen, like, share, comment. Let somebody know that Word is online and we've got words to live by. salvation, serious about our education, and committed to the demonstration of God's love to this world. We are consistent in giving the tithe and the offering, knowing that God will give us what we need, when it is needed, and more than what is needed. We are submissive to the Spirit cooperative with our leaders, and loving with one another. We are doers of the word, bearers of spiritual fruit, and we are victorious in all that we say and do. Now, let's get ready for the word. Mm -hmm. 
trust in you've tuned in to join us. Listen, isn't it amazing that we can be anywhere and share the word of God? I'm so excited that you tune in. Listen, this is what I need you to do for me. I need you to like, I need you to share, and if something is said that touches your life, I need you to comment. Now remember, when you can't catch us online, you can always catch us in person. 8601 MacArthur Boulevard in the city of Oakland, Kalshama High School. I'm so excited to have you tune in today. And I really want to know that if these messages in this series, I think it's going to be a blessing to you. And, and thank God for those of you all who reached out last week. You left comments. You sent uh, inboxes to know that the message blessed you. I just believe that God is getting ready to do something amazing in the life of his children when his children really embrace how he feels about them. Last week, we talked about that in God's feelings toward us, he feels fatherly. In other words, he wants to be our father. And with him being our father, he's got a character we can trust. He's got provision and protection that we can count on. Well, I want to go back to that series today. And I want to pick up with the second letter in feel, and that's the letter E. And I want to share with you today how he feels about you because how God feels about you is expressed in what God does for you. And that is today he empowers you. Now, listen, before we get into the word, I want you right where you are just to bow your head and repeat after me. Dear God, you know me. You know everything about me. Based upon what you know about me, say something to me. That will cause my life to be better after hearing this word. In Jesus' name, amen. 
How does he feel about you? Well, I want you to know he empowers you. Now, you may not always feel like it, but trust me, if you're in a relationship with him, he has empowered you in the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to go with me, if you will, to the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 13. I'm sorry, verses 12 and 13. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Paul, the apostle, is writing this letter to the church at Philippi. And it's one of the few churches, perhaps the only church, that has been consistent and faithful in supporting Paul's ministry. Paul is now uh, incarcerated. Some say he would be equivalent to what we call a halfway house. And there, the church at Philippi has once again shown their love and support and appreciation to the apostle. In, extern, uh, rather in return for their gift, he writes a letter of thanks. And in chapter 2, he reveals to something, or he reveals to us something extremely important when it comes down to God empowering you. Now, before I read it, I think I, it's important for me to share with you that if you are a child of God, you have within you the Holy Spirit. If you are the child of God, then the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in your life. I know that to be the case because Paul says no one can say that Jesus Christ is Lord but by the Holy Spirit. So if you're able to say that Jesus Christ is your Lord, it is because the Holy Spirit touched your heart, allowed you to hear the gospel. And when you received him as Savior, the Holy Spirit took up residence in your life. Now somebody's asked me, oh, 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 Bishop Clark, who is the Holy Spirit? And the best way I can describe him is he is Jesus with no skin on him. He lives on the inside of you. Sometimes he appears in that small, still voice. Sometimes it's the knowing at your conscience. Sometimes he's working through the situation to let you know that this is God doing this. Or sometimes this is God stopping this. The Holy Spirit lives within you. And so through the Holy Spirit, he empowers you. The challenge is, though you have him, perhaps you have been given all of you to him. I like to use the analogy. It's a little wild, but I think it gets the point. If you would go to the grocery store and buy you a bottle of wine, go home, and you begin to drink that wine. Now, when you bought the wine, the wine belonged to you. You had to receive it. It was in your possession. When you got home, you uncorked the bottle, and you began to drink it. And pretty soon, the wine that you had now has you. So it is with the Holy Spirit. Paul talks about in the book of Ephesians, be ye not drunk with wine, but be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. And so what I want to share with you today, when it comes down to how God feels about you, that God wants you to win. God wants you to succeed. He's rooting for you and he's proven it by giving you the power you need to live the life that's productive and progressive. Hey, my friend, this is Bishop Clark. Hope all things are going well with you. Listen, I know you're being blessed by this word, but I wanted to take a brief minute of your time to share with you that we're asking all of our online church members. And we say online church members because we understand that being a part of the church does not mean you have to be attached to the building. We are the body of Christ, those of us who've received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And what we're asking all of you all who can to sow a weekly seed of $25. What that allows us to do, it allows us to make sure that our content is presented in a way that's appealing and attractive and impactful. So would you do that if you don't mind? The information on how you can give is there on the screen. $25 seed so that we can keep our online church going. Because guess what? We're living in a day and time where you can go to church at any time. God bless you. Let's get back to the word. Listen to what Paul pins in chapter 2 to this letter to the church at Philippi. He says in verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, if you have always obeyed, 
not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Listen to this. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Paul says to the believers, he says, listen, just like you have been following and, 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 and governing yourselves according to the word of God in my presence, I'm glad to know and I ask that you would continue to do so in my absence. And literally what Paul was saying, uh, you haven't, uh, you, you've dismantled that old cliche that when the cat's away, the mouse will play. No, even in my absence, you have been consistent following the teachings of Jesus Christ. And he says, I want you to continue to do it. And listen to how he coins the phrase of them continuing to walk in obedience. He says, work out your salvation. Now, I want to clear up something. The text does not say work for your salvation. It says work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And that just simply means with a sense of urgency, being serious about working out your salvation. Now, what does it mean to work out your salvation? Well, to fully understand what it means to work out your salvation, you've got to pick up verse 13 where he says, for it is God, watch this, y'all, who is working in you. <laughs> for his will and pleasure. In other words, what Paul is saying, work out what God is working in. Work out from the inside. With God, work out what God is doing on the inside. You see, Paul makes something very powerful and very clear here. Listen to what he says. He says, it is God that's working in you. Stop right there. This working out that needs to happen is God working in you. Paul says, it is God who's doing this in you. What is he doing? He's doing both the will and the pleasure. In other words, it is God that gives us the drive and it's God that gives us the desire. It's God that gives us the desire and the drive to do what it is he's calling us to do. See, it, it's, it's very important to understand that the good you and I do, we don't do because we are good apart from God. The good you and I do, we do because God is in us. Come on now, think about it. How many times have you been motivated, pushed, reminded, and I'm going to just go and be honest with you, Holy Spirit just got on your nerves from the standpoint that he kept pressing on you to do something. That is God working in you. And Paul says he wants you to work it out. Why? Because God empowers you. God never calls you to do anything he does not empower you to do. I'm going to say it again. God never calls you to do anything that he does not empower you to do. So when you're wondering how God feels about you, understand that God wants you to win. And he makes it evident that he's put the power within you to do what needs to be done. All you have to do is yield to what's on the inside. Somebody want to type that in the comment. Yield to what's on the inside. Listen, I tried. I, I'm not as consistent as I should be, but I try to work out. But if you go and see my brother, you're going to see his arms are bigger than mine, shoulders bigger than mine, because he's consistently working out in the gym. But the reality is the same muscles he got in his body, I got in mine. The, the same muscle he has in his body, I've got in mine. The only difference is He's working his out. Somebody gets my point. It's not that somebody's got more Jesus than you do or, 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 or they've got a, a greater connection to God than you do. Of course not. We are all his children. Some have just chose to go to the gym. 
Some have just told, chose to do those things that allows the Holy Spirit free range to move in our lives. But don't you think that God has set you up to fail? Please, don't you ever feel as though God has just left you out here by yourself to make it on your own. No, he's empowered you. You and I have got to yield ourselves to allow the Holy Spirit who's on the inside to show up on the outside. But that won't happen until we embrace the fact that he is within. You see, a lot of us are looking for God all over the place. And he is everywhere. But don't you know that he lives within you? Listen to what Paul tells the church at Corinth. He says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? He lives within you. You have the power. In the same letter, Paul goes on to say that I can do all things through Christ. He empowers you. You are not weak. Listen to me. You are not weak. You may be disobedient, but you're not weak. You may have some shortcomings, but you are not weak. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So how does God feel about you on this Sunday morning? He's a God who wants you to win. Because he's not only fathering you. He's empowering you. He's giving you everything you need to win. You've just got to type in. He's giving you everything you need to win. You've just got to tap in. And guess what? Believe it or not, you've already started. You're getting this word in you. And the more word you get in you, the more you digest his word, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So the more words you hear, the more words you apply, the stronger your faith gets. And the stronger your faith gets, the more you're in tune with the Holy Spirit. And the more you start seeing him show up on the outside. You start finding yourself handling issues and individuals differently. You start finding yourself holding your peace and instead of everything popping in your head comes out of your mouth, you start walking in discipline. You find yourself not being mad and upset at stuff people are saying or what you think they're saying because it's not that important. Because you're so focused on your goal and you're so in tune in what you're doing and where you're going because you realize you've been empowered. You're not average. Listen to me. I'm talking to you now. You're not average. And the reason why things become uncomfortable and the reason why you get bored with things fast is not that you've got a short attention span, but there's a power that's working in you that's causing you to reach beyond where you are, that's causing you to get and desire more than what you have. And I'm just not talking about stuff. I'm talking about character. I'm talking about wisdom because he empowers you. And I want you to embrace that. That's more than you, as somebody would say, catching the Holy Ghost. You got it. This ain't you catching the Holy Ghost. This is the Holy Spirit catching you. <laughs> this is the Holy Spirit dominating your life. And that power that's on the inside starts showing up in everything you touch. Listen to me. Everything you touch begins to prosper. It begins to fall in line with God's will and purpose for your life. And then you start experiencing fulfillment because he empowers you. Let's pray. Father, in your name, I thank you. I thank you for this moment. And I pray for my friend, my brother, my sister, that you would allow them to embrace how you feel about them and your feelings toward them and that you want them to win. You want them to succeed and to prove that you've empowered them in the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you right now in Jesus name. Amen. Listen, I want you to know today that God feels about you in a manner. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That will cause you to feel good about yourself. And it will start having you feel 
good about us. Stay tuned. Somebody's going to pray to let you know how you can get deeper in this relationship with God. Until next time, come back next week. We've got another E in the word field. God bless you. Peace. Hey, my friend, listen. As a result of hearing the word, I pray that something stirred in your spirit and maybe you're the person that doesn't have a relationship with the Lord. And I'm not talking about whether you watch church a lot or you read your Bible or you've gone to church or were brought up in church. I'm talking about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's something you have to do for yourself. And I'm going to pray this prayer and I want you to repeat these words. Believing by faith the words that you say, Jesus will come in immediately and make you part of the family. If you can, bow just right where you are. Just repeat these words. Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. I believe that you died on the cross. And on the third day, God the Father raised you from the dead. Right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart and I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want to thank you for becoming part of the family. Welcome to the family. Now you're entitled to all the benefits. God is your father. Jesus is your savior, your Lord, and your example. And life gets better when you continue to trust God in every situation. Listen, doesn't mean you won't have problems. It means now you've got a problem solver. Be blessed. God bless you. And again, welcome to the family. It is God for me, it is God for me Can't you see all the ways he's been blessing me Praise him, I say glory be to him The blessings come from him, so praise him He woke me up this morning, gifted me the life to live My home, my help for everything you could imagine That is for me, for me to feel what the future holds I 